Well, great. Here we are from the Chime Conference. Uh, Joel, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Joel Vancom, the Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer of Bay State Health, a uh, large health system in Massachusetts. Great. Western Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts, the great, the great big west. I'm trying to figure out what bay is in the western part of Massachusetts. <laughs> We're referencing the, the bay next to Boston. Oh, okay. Just to make sure everybody knows that there is another part of Massachusetts. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, Boston's interesting because of the uh, the uh, health plan, that's the, the state-run health plan. How is that different? I'm already going off script. I'm sorry. That's yeah, okay. But, but um, are you looking at more population health initiatives and those kind of things? Yeah, so, so Massachusetts has, has been in advance of pop health and, and taking risks for quite some time. Actually, Bay State, I'd like to say, is probably one of those that are really sort of leading the charge. We ourselves have our own health plan, uh, but I think what you're referencing also is, is that this, this year particularly, having launched the Medicaid ACO uh, in Massachusetts, we're really focused on taking risk, uh, a number of us, at least in, the, in the, uh, the state, the Commonwealth, and also focused on really identifying ways for us to really manage those patients at risk and really diving deep into value-based care. And when health systems take risks, they they look to technology. It's like, how can we care for people at home? How can they convalesce at home and those kind of things? Are, are those some of the things you're looking at? Yeah, so that's sort of an interest for me, at least at this conference, is to look at some of those tech uh, you know, uh, vendors and, and even some, some early stage uh, startups who are identifying ways for us to know our patients, number one. I think that's, that's sort of key in this sort of new realm of, of, of healthcare delivery. If you don't know your patients, you don't know how to care for them. You don't know what they need. And ultimately, that's what we're really focused on is, uh, you know, what is it that they need so that we can keep them healthy? And so social determinants of health, the work that we're doing with care need screening to understand, you know, who these patients or this population is, is crucial. Uh, and that's actually uh, in excess of the, the, the data that we captured today in the EHR. So social determinants of health is often not in the EHR, and that's what we're going to really need yeah. to focus on this year. So how will, you, how will you do the show? I think a lot of people wonder, you know, how do CIOs do the show? I, 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 used, to, I used to love the Chime event because you get to interact with all your peers and have great conversations and learn from each other. And then the event would start. And, I, you know, my plan was, you know, schedule as much stuff as possible, just be very directive. Because when you walk the floor and people see the CIO badge in some way, right. Yeah. They, uh, they tend to gravitate towards you. So how will you work this show? Yeah, so a couple of things. One is I, I do have the sort of slew of meetings that we all do right. uh, put on the list. It's great to meet with your vendors. This is a great time to do it all sort of in one shot. Uh, then I meet with a lot of my peers and we sort of exchange notes on what we're all sort of looking at, what have we seen, et cetera. Uh, and then, you know, I've got two things that, that I always sort of come to hymns with in terms of what, what am I looking for? What are the things that I, I want to be focused on this year? It's going to really be on... Uh, things like social determinants of health, uh, focused on uh, those that actually can help us uh, access that data, um, analyze that data, and then the other the other piece is a little bit more sort of you know fuzzy. It's uh, the AI stuff, all the new stuff that's sort of coming out. I want to see if it's vaporware or, or realware, right? So uh, typically that's that's what I what I do when I come to these that, shows. That's interesting. So um, AI is is I, I think you're going to hear it everywhere. Yeah. Um, what I'm, what I'm hearing, and I don't know if you're going to find this to be the case or not, is uh, on the clinical side, people are waiting in very slowly. But in the areas of revenue cycle and on the business side, yeah. in terms of RPA and uh, automating and those kind of things, uh, and AI around that, yeah. um, we're seeing a lot of people take chances. Because you can take chances there, because you can make mistakes and it doesn't. Correct. Yeah, that's really the, I think that's exactly the, the right, um, you know, sort of take on it is that there are certain things that are commodity work that we can take chances on. We, we ourselves have been taking chances at Bay State through our innovation center um, in partnership with some vendors and doing things like RPA um, on our rev cycle, uh, you know, work. But also we're starting to, to look at things like, you know, imaging analytics and can we take all the images that we have, and these are all experimentation based work. It's not stuff, it's production. But we're, you know, hitting AI uh, at that, or at least what people are considering AI. I mean, a lot of the stuff is still neural net, and, oh, yeah, you know, machine learning, a lot of the old stuff. But, you know, I think there, there's merit to trying to figure out if we can use the data that's in our systems, which is ultimately the case that we're uh, trying to address here, and then trying to figure out if we can deliver insights off of that data. So I keep going on script. So you have an innovation center? Yes. Uh, yes. Does that, is that something you work with, or is that something that's... Uh, technically reports into you or? Yeah, so actually four, four and a half years ago I started uh, TechSpring 
And the notion really, the focus was that there's all this stuff that's going to be coming down the pike, already coming down the pike, lots of noise. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, my team and my, my head are sort of down with operations, just trying to fix things, right, optimize right. things. So TechSpring became a channel for us to get our heads up, uh, invite folks, uh, vendors, startups, you name it, from within industry, outside of industry, uh, and invite them to utilize our data, our experts, and our environment, and say, help us solve some of these passionate problems that we have in healthcare, and you guys can benefit as much as we can with uh, discovering some of these things with the assets that we have. So that's what TechSpring really is. It's not. Um, sort of the traditional incubator or um, you know investment house that you see with these innovation centers. The, there are so many different models. Yeah. For I mean, you know, Cedars went with the TechStars route. Yes. And, and Providence is more of a VC, and UPMC is more of a VC. Correct. Um, but I'm finding that the the smaller systems, the the billion to three to five billion. Yep. Um, they take that approach of hey, we can be a sandbox for you. Right. We're looking for the right partners. Here's our set of problems. That's right. Yeah, the problem is, is we also don't have a lot of money, right? right. So, but but actually that sort of that necessity of, of having to solve problems with sort of little budget created, I think, that sort of movement of you know here's here's a way for us to collaborate with those that are trying to solve these problems. And so, we've got this amazing community uh, that actually comes together to collide in this innovation center. And we're talking folks like Cerner and Improvada and InterSystems, yeah. and, and then you got some startups. The big these big and small players coming together and trying to solve these problems with us, um, sort of helping to drive some of that. It's been quite a fascinating journey and one that's been very productive. So biggest challenge for the year you're looking at? So the biggest challenge for the year, there are two challenges really. One is we've got a ton of data in our systems. We've, I've been trying to extract it out for the last five and a half years since I've been at Bay State Health. Still a big challenge, but we need that to know our patients. The second is, you know, we're on this verge now of, of doing a 2025 strategy for our health system, right? And right. so, guess what the, the big buzzwords are that I have to sort of help define, uh, you know, the system around, and it's digital, it's consumerism. And so that's a big challenge for us to really understand, are there players out there that can help us with that new focus? Uh, because quality and safety, value and experience, those things are, are, you know, what I would consider table stakes, or at least, you know, stable and focused areas that we should be doing well on. But now it's about the consumer, it's about the digital platform that's going to This, this is one of the trends that we said coming into this conference we were going to look at is talking to CIOs, is you're, you have uh, traditional IT, yeah. keep it running and run well, and, and, and data and analytics around that as well. Yeah. Then you have uh, this whole digital, which is, hey, what are we going to do around the consumer and the consumer experience? And then you have this innovation side. And it sounds like it, it's all coming to you, but we're seeing some of it where it's starting to split up in some organizations. It's, it's actually a lot of organizations are splitting it up that way. And I think it's, it behooves the CIO. I mean, it really depends on what kind of CIO you are. Right. You want to run the trains, that's cool. There are others that want to run the trains and help to create new trains, that's really cool. And there are others that try to get into the business of, of healthcare. And so I think that notion of digital versus innovation versus information officer, um, you know, yeah. I think organizations can do one or they can, you can have and, three. And whether you split it apart or not, the three have to work very closely to together. Very so closely. If, it's, if it is under one roof, it hopefully brings it all together. Right, and that's the challenge for the CIO is really to, to, to be able to be, at some level, the nexus for a lot of those things. Yeah, absolutely. So. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Bro. Appreciate it. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too.